and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and today we're going to be going over two different regularization algorithms that will help you prevent your neural networks from overfitting. Let's get started. Now, these two algorithms are Dropout and Drop Connect. You may have already seen a few of my videos on algorithms like Dropout and Overfitting, but just in case you haven't seen them, let me go over and give you a quick primer on what overfitting is and also its less often counterpart, underfitting as well. So let's start off with what overfitting is. Now, overfitting is when your neural network goes ahead and memorizes its data. It doesn't generalize to data. What that means is whatever you train it on, it has remembered, but it's unable to answer new data. It's unable to take new data and give you good results because it's just trying to memorize what you trained it on. This can happen if you have too many parameters in your neural network. So for example, let's just say you've got a graph of data uh, like so. So you've got your uh, x and y axes here and you've just got a bunch of data like this. If your neural network is specifically drawing a line like this, like on each dot, what that means is your neural network has essentially memorized the locations of every one of those dots and is just drawing a straight line between them. It hasn't actually learnt any useful patterns. And underfitting is what happens when, for example, uh, you have a neural network that draws a very ambiguous line to your data. So for example, if you've got this data over here, if your neural network just draws a line like this, it's not learning a very good fit of the data and could use some more parameters. But a good fit on data is one where you're not going from point to point, but at the same time, your neural network has a good idea of the structure of your data. So, for example, if you've got another good set of points over here, if your neural network understands how to go between these points of data, and understand how to separate them, and does good on both the training and the validation sets, then you've got a good fit. And this is what you want. Because, of course, you can't train your neural network on everything it's going to see. There are a few ways to combat overfitting. First of all, of course, more data is always better because then you've got a much higher variety of data and different features that you're exposing your neural network to, but sometimes this isn't always possible. And in some cases, you have very, very few examples, but tons of features, in which case you are very prone to overfitting your networks and other machine learning algorithms. Like, for example, Kaggle has their Don't Overfit Challenge, where they give you 200 training examples of 20,000 features each, which, of course, makes your neural networks very prone to overfitting. But there are a few ways to combat overfitting and underfitting. Of course, underfitting, feeding in more parameters, creating a larger neural network always helps. When it comes to overfitting, decreasing the width and sometimes increasing the depth of your neural network always helps. Introducing things like residual connections don't hurt either. And when it comes to more complex networks, like convolutional networks, there are new and better techniques like batch normalization that enable you to actually normalize and stand standardize, actually, the data that your layers output. However, dropout is what we're going to talk about today. So how exactly does dropout work? Let's take a look. Now, let's just say you've got a simple multi-layer perceptron neural network. Now, this neural network has a very, very simple structure, actually. You've essentially just got these two input neurons, say we're doing the XOR task. Uh, you've got three different hidden neurons, and you've got one output neuron, okay? Very, very simple. Now, each of the input neurons are connected to each of the hidden neurons, of course. This is how multi-layer perceptron uh, networks work. And then after that, every single one of the hidden uh, nodes is connected to uh, the final output node. And so, just like that, you've got a simple multi-layer perceptron network. But let's just say you had thousands of these inputs, you had, say, three or four different layers, and you had hundreds of individual nodes within those layers. In that case, you've got a lot of weights. And because you've got a lot of weights, that means your network has a very, very strong ability to memorize. But that's not what you want it to do. If, of course, backpropagation had the choice to, it would just encode all that information 
information within the weights so that it could memorize each one. But you don't want to give backpropagation that chance. And so you've got to use a few tricks in order to prevent overfitting. One of these tricks is called dropout. Now the way dropout works is, well, you drop out a few neurons at random to force the neural network to make new paths to learn the same knowledge. And so, for example, let's just say we apply dropout on this layer over here. We apply dropout over on this layer. Now, every time you apply dropout, you have to apply a probability, okay? So let's just say our probability is 50%. Okay, we've got a 50%, 0.5 probability of dropping out every individual node. So during the forward propagation over here, essentially what we're going to do is at random, we're going to take these neurons and there's a 50% chance of just setting their value to zero. So no matter what these are, this could be X, this could be Y, this could be Z, no matter what they are, there's a 50% chance of X just becoming a zero, there's a 50% chance of Y and 50% chance of Z becoming zero. This essentially makes it so that they don't learn anything for that one individual step of training. And so what that does is it forces the neural network to say, hey, even if this input isn't available, I can also make a decision just by looking at this neuron and this neuron. And there's no pattern to how dropout works. It would work in just random ways, forcing the neural network to create new pathways of learning how to make a classification or regress to a certain continuous value. And so this is how dropout works. You could have very aggressive dropout at, say, 70% dropout probability, although that's usually over-aggressive, or you could have very minimal dropout, just around 10% around uh, backpropagation through time, for example, to make sure that information's still flowing, but you've got a few different ways to get knowledge across. And so this is how the dropout algorithm works. Drop Connect gets a little bit more specific with how things work though. Again, with Drop Connect, you've got another probability, but you don't apply probabilities to layers, you apply it to the weights between layers. And so for example, let's just say that this layer over here has these weights, and this layer has these three weights. Now let's just say we were to apply Drop Connect to this set of weights over here. And again, if we were to apply, say, a 50% chance of dropping out randomly, then what we would do is instead of dropping out the actual nodes, we're gonna keep their values. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop out individual connections between nodes. So for example, let's just say input one to X has been crossed out, all right? Let's just say input two to Y has been crossed out, okay? So we don't want this connection and we also don't want this connection. And just like that, that's all you need to do. Each weight has a 50% chance of being dropped uh, from that backward pass. Now, one thing to note, you will not do this during your forward pass. There's this thing called a learning phase indicator that will essentially tell the dropout to say, all right, if you're doing a backward pass, then apply dropout or drop connect. But if you're doing a forward pass, just pretend like it's not there and don't do anything. Because when we're doing a forward pass, we want the inferences of all neurons to be influencing the final output value. And so that is how Dropout and Drop Connect work. And their performance is really mind-boggling for such a simple technique. It can be applied in practically any neural network architecture from multilayer perceptrons to convolutional neural networks, all the way to recurrent neural networks. However, convolutional neural networks don't usually play very well with dropout because there are certain filters that may be critical to, for example, to the final output decision based off of a certain class or even individual pixels within filters. And therefore, dropout isn't usually used nowadays, at least, with convolutional neural networks. You'll still probably see a few implementations of CNNs with dropout, but it's not very common because it's been superseded by a new algorithm called batch normalization. And so in the next part of the video, I'll be describing batch normalization and how you can actually standardize not only input data to your network, but also you can standardize the data coming out of each layer to make the next layer's learning easier and accelerate your training by many, many fold. 
And so that was a quick overview of the dropout and drop connect algorithms and how you can prevent your neural networks from overfitting by enabling backpropagation to find new ways to spread knowledge throughout the neural network and at the same time make sure that all nodes get some knowledge and they're not just memorizing certain values based off of certain inputs. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Thank you very much for joining in. In the next part, I'll be showing you batch normalization and, of course, how you can go ahead and implement this algorithm along with batch normalization on your own data sets with multilayer perceptrons and convolutional neural networks in CROSS and Swift for TensorFlow. All right, so thank you very much joining in for, for joining in today. That's what I had for this tutorial. Do hope you enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like down below. If you do have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, feel free to leave a comment and I will certainly get back to you. Apart from that, if you do believe this tutorial could be useful to anyone you know, like your family or friends, feel free to share the video as well. And if you really do like my content and you want to see more of it, feel free to subscribe to the channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. And apart from that, turn on notifications if you'd like to be, if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content. So thank you very much. Goodbye.